Laura will have more details in her Tuesday newsletter, Our Land Weekly. You can subscribe, subscribe, excuse me, by finding Our Land NM on Instagram. Now back to the line. New Mexico State University is back in the national headlines this week after a report from ESPN detailing alleged harassment, sexual assault, and intimidation on the men's basketball team. It's just the latest in a series of scandals surrounding the team that started last December when police say NMSU player Mike Peake shot and killed UNM student Brandon Travis on campus here in Albuquerque. The team kept playing for three more months, but things fell apart in February after allegations surfaced about three players ganging up on a teammate and what police say included a possible incident of criminal sexual contact. Now, Chancellor Dan Arvizu canceled the season shortly afterwards, and then came the lawsuits. Mr. Arvizu resigned in April, one month after firing head basketball coach Greg Heyer. But the same day, Mr. Arvizu stepped down from the university, re-signed athletic director Mario Mocha to a five-year contract extension. Now, Steve, let me ask you this. How does an AD survive that many black eyes in that short a space of time? That's an, this is an amazing circumstance when you think about it. Uh, this is groundbreaking. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, it, it just really is amazing. And uh, who, uh, the whole thing just seems like rotten to the core there. I think they need a pretty big overhaul down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's um, a lawsuits the way to do it. Is this what we're down to? No one seems to want to do the right thing before the lawsuit gets thrown on the table. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I don't see what else they could do at this mm -hmm. point because uh, nothing mm -hmm. else is happening. Right. Um, Dee, one of the allegations in the lawsuit was that one of the players' father tried to reach uh, Mr. Mochia, Mochia, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his name, to discuss the alleged assaults, but the AD did not return the calls. Yeah. That's an amazing thing to me. Yeah. You're trying to hear from a parent. Yes, that's right. Wow. And, um, even worse than the hazing and the, and the sexual assault is the, um, the coaches ignoring it and, uh, and, and others ignoring it as well. It really looks like, you know, uh, um, a witch's cauldron down there mm -hmm. uh, with sort of inner, uh, I don't know, some sort of a cover-up kind of mentality that's going on that, um, that ha seems to have no end. Accountability is a big theme at our table tonight, all the subjects we're talking about. And Justine, I just gotta ask, I mean, does the contract extension now bring into question the decision-making of the Board of Regents? Has there been enough accountability? No, I think it probably does. And, yeah. I, and I think Dee Dee's right. Um, the cover-up is always worse, and I think we're going to find out there's a lot more than we even know about. Right. I mean, I, I don't have any specialized knowledge about sports, Division One sports or sports in New Mexico, but just sitting where I do, this goes back way before that shooting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were problems on the football team several years ago with those two African-American coaches getting fired, the racial epithets, yep. nothing was done, as That's far right. as I could tell. That's right. um, you know, you had serious fights, brutal, brutalization on the, the basketball team, nothing was done. You had this fight at the football game. All this could have been anticipated. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe not specifically, but I'm pretty sure that this athletic director had to have been ignoring a lot of complaints for a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, I, and I, I'm not saying this is a Rick Pitino situation, but you can't have this much going on and coaches failing these kids for this long That's right. and in such a widespread way without the whole administration knowing. And yeah, I think the regents have to be accountable. Yeah. Um, and so now we end up at this point, Gene, and I just, mm -hmm. you know, talking about failing the kids, this kid, I guess they're adults, but mm -hmm. this, this student um, who's, who's made these allegations, he's a Las Cruces kid playing Division One basketball. That's right. What does the school do? What does the coach do? What does the AD do? What do the regents do? They tell him, uh, apparently, you need to transfer. Right. Not, we're going to make this right. We are going to send a message, not only to you, mm -hmm. um, and this has upended your life, but to, to the whole community that this isn't going to be tolerated. No, we don't do that. We tell the kid, this is just how we do it at NMSU. That's right. And I find that to be the most appalling yeah. Fact of all. That's a well, well put there. Uh, Steve, a very telling quote here, NMSU's Vice Chair of Faculty Senate. Uh, this is uh, uh, in relation to the crazy raise we're going to talk about here. Quote, because there's so much churn in our upper administration, we never get to the point of hammering out who is actually accountable for upholding policies, end quote. That's very telling. It, 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 it's a good you point. can't have churn and have policies being made. That's, that's right. It's uh, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, 
Uh, Dee Dee mentioned the witches' coven. I don't. I don't think we can blame oh, the witches say on this Dee Dee one. the whole time. This yeah. athletic director oversaw all of this. So right. while there may be some truth to that, mm -hmm. it, the buck stops there. How do we? How do we? How do we factor in guys the letter from from the faculty that's now been distributed and they're having a big problem with the raise and how it came down? You know, this man gets an extension given to him on the last day of somebody going out the door, a senator. It just doesn't feel good to people when you think about this. If you were faculty in the business of teaching students to go out in the world and be productive citizens, you're seeing this whole sports meltdown. Wouldn't you call for an end of sports at some point? And yes. say, we need to, get, you know? Yes. If I was a faculty member there, I would be outraged. Right. Of course, I would be outraged even before the scandal to know that athletic directors and coaches get hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, in compensation, and mm -hmm. I get 70000 or 60000 right. And I'm teaching kids some of the, uh, the, the, the basics of what we think higher education should do. I mean, the whole thing does bring into question the mm -hmm. larger... A matter of are we overdoing the competition and the sports and the violence and the entertainment and 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 downgrading the actual educational process which right. often involves um, you know cooperation collaboration um, learning right. uh, telling the truth um, and uh, it, it's School of higher education. That's what you're talking about. I mean, uh, that's what we pay the state dollars right. to do. That's right. Um, and that's what we promise our children. That's right. Um, and this promise has been broken. Yeah. Um, One of our regular panelists, as you all know, Dan Foley. Of course, you've served with Dan in the past. He has a, ch uh, a son who played football down there. And it's interesting the points of view he brings up, Steve. That you know. I, there's a, like a lot of lawsuits always floating around. And what that does to potential recruits, who would want to go there? You see what I mean here? If you were an athlete, well, exactly. why would yeah. you want to go there? Exactly. And, and it's just... Uh, if you were an honorable coach, why would you want to go there? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Why yeah. would you be yeah. caught up in this? Just, um, I don't know what they're looking for. Uh, and uh, the basketball uh, team is, you know, they had mm -hmm. to cancel. Who, who knows when it's coming back? And, yeah. Uh, yeah. So... Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Didi. I, I think that uh, this uh, mm -hmm. the, the whole the whole shebang just seem, seems rotten to the. Let core. me throw this in as well, guys. Uh, it's not the only lawsuit against the school. Yeah, you might recall last year, a Jane Doe alleged that a longtime professor with ties to the athletic department, quote, harassed and groomed female students for years, coercing them into sexual relations and bragging about the same. End quote. All the while, school officials looked the other way. The plaintiff alleges she was sexually assaulted by the professor. If these incidents, uh, Senator, were allowed to happen on top of everything else that we're talking about here, she would be asking how deep these problems run. I mean, again, kind of asking the same question over and over. How do we dig down to the bottom of this and uproot all of this if we got Jane Doe's of these kind of lawsuits as well? Well, and before the lawsuits, there must have been other whistleblowers. That's right. Um, and I That's noticed right. that one of the complaints was that these whistleblowers were, have been suppressed yes. as well. That's right. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not just NMSU. It's also Eastern. Mm -hmm. uh, Eastern has had a incident like this recently mm -hmm. revealed the, through a lawsuit the about women's basketball players. the women's yeah. basketball coach's mm -hmm. husband she she sent them to him then to him for therapy that was really a sexual uh, sexual sexual assault um, and so there's a lawsuit there as well um, so it's it's a big problem if it's not addressed quickly and if it's not if the regents and the and the um, administration doesn't deal with it, I mean, there's going to be ah, no may I choice. Jump in on your yeah. point there about the administration, I think it's a very interesting point there. Um, the governor, as you know, um, filed a anti-hazing legislation. I guess, Justine, we can call it. I'm not quite sure what it's designed to do. Was this a policy issue? I don't or? know. I mean, what was done? Right. If if the allegations are true, what was done was illegal. I don't right. think we. I don't think the solution is another statute. Right. Um, right. We just need to open our eyes to what's happening mm -hmm. there. And, and you know, but let's, let's stay on this for a quick second. Again, is this an, another reason to just I'll be incendiary here, uh, burn it to the ground and just start over? I mean, Division One stuff, we, we, the NFSU sells themselves around the country to powerhouse sports teams. 
to get paid big money to get beaten up on. You know what I mean? It's just for a lot of people, it's just it's unseemly. It's not a good way to yeah. kind of do sport here. I think it's a good mm -hmm. time. And, you know, Dee Dee points out at the end of the day, is there taxpayer dollars going into this public institution mm -hmm. that's a school of higher learning. It's a good time to assess what return we're getting. Let me, add, let me throw this on the table then. We do not have a unified upper education system like California does. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that the answer, Senator? Uh, perhaps to get this tied a little bit closer, more accountability with a unified system with our schools, possibly? Well, well that's a big question. I yeah. mean, that's a bigger question than just the athletic departments. Right. It's, a, it's, a, it's a question of like um, the state getting the biggest bang for its buck in terms of higher education. That's right. Um, and not having the proliferation of branch colleges, community colleges, uh, mm -hmm. universities that mm -hmm. each have their own regions, each have their own athletic department, each have their own. It's cost Maybe the state. Maybe are not viable. Yeah, which may not be viable, but you can't tell that to the small communities right. because it's like removing their hospital. These are jobs. These are identity. These are so I, you know, I I think it would help in in terms of setting the standards for what is not permissible. Um, That's right. And and maybe if there were hazing standards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're one of, of six states that doesn't have a hazing law. And, and I agree with Justine, most of this stuff is against the law. Right. It is sexual assault, right. or it is rape, yeah. um, or it is battery. Um, so, but, you know, it's, it's interesting that we, we, we're one of six states that don't, don't have a hazing. It reminds me of the cockfighting yeah. situation a few years ago uh, yes. when uh, we were like the, one of two states that didn't have anti-cockfighting. Mm -hmm. um, I agree that's not going to solve everything, but uh, I don't think it would be bad to have those, uh, that law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me finish, to be fair to the governor, she also said, it, it is the responsibility of higher ed leadership and governing boards to establish a safe, healthy environment for students, and I'm incredibly disappointed that it does not appear to be a priority at some of the state's public colleges and universities, end quote. Didn't quite name NS NMSU there, but... Fair point. Does that feel like it? She's getting a very controversial statement that she really put herself out there in terms of how to fix right, it. Right, <laughs> right. Maybe she should say a thing about state. Who knows? Thanks again to this brilliant panel. Uh, be sure to let us know what you think about any of the topics the line covered on our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages, and catch any episodes you may have missed on the PBS app, your Roku, or smart TV. Thanks again for joining us and for staying informed and engaged. We'll see you all again next week in Focus.